Okay, well, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this uh, webinar. We're going to be talking through the amazing parts of North East France today, and you're going to learn a lot. We've got some great local tourism board representatives, and I, it's going to take about maybe 35 minutes or so. It's going to be packed full of information on regions, best things to see, and, and some of the new attractions as well. My name is Barton Matthews. I'm the European Operations Manager at Eurobound Tours. And we are a tour operator uh, based here in the USA. Um, we've got satellite offices in Europe as well, meaning we can have really fast turnaround times. And our real specialty is customized bespoke FIT itineraries. Um, our absolute bread and butter is doing it for families, for couples, for honeymooners, some multi-generational trips. And we've got, we've been in business for 25 years now. So we've got a really strong bank of experience to draw upon as well as some great relationships with local suppliers um, and hotels on the ground. Um, our 14% commissions are paid up front and um, you've, obviously it's really important to have peace of mind at the moment with so much uncertainty in travel and any deposits that clients pay and for the final payments is put in a separate account so your clients will never lose their money when they book a holiday with us. I'm going to be joined here by three wonderful colleagues, Benoit and the Christelles from Pas de Calais, N and Meuse Tourism Boards. And they are going to talk you through some, firstly, some amazing prizes that you can win. Um, we've got some great, great prizes. And at the end um, of the webinar, there will be three questions to answer. And you'll be sending those answers, quite straightforward questions, uh, to Barton at Eurobound.com. But we're going to have the full details of that. Um, as the presentation goes on. So that's it for me for now. I'm going to pop back up at the end. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to pass it over um, to the team in France. Thank you, Barton. So I'm going to share my screen. Can you see it? It's good. There we go. So thank you to be here and to listen to our webinar. So as Barton says, you can uh, win our wonderful giveaways. This one is from the Pas de Calais. Benoit, let you talk about it. You're mute. Sorry for that. So this is the Hotel Atlantic. It's located uh, just north of Boulogne, not far from Calais. So it's on the coastline, on the open coast. And all the rooms have a sea view. They have two restaurants. It's family run. Actually, the father and the son are other chefs there. And the son's taking over. He's really, really, uh, really good at seafood. And uh, it's a lovely place. So you will enjoy a night, overnight stay there with the sea view. The sun is setting on the sea and uh, a lovely Michelin starred um, dinner for two, including drinks. So fingers crossed you win it. Mm. The next giveaway is a wonderful time in a champagne cellar, in the Métayer Champagne Cellar. Uh, you will discover the museum, the cellar, obviously, and the art gallery and taste free champagnes. And, the and finally, we'll uh, lead you to the Meuse area and win uh, maybe a night uh, at Verdun in a beautiful accommodation located in a former officer's uh, mess, a building uh, the, along the Meuse River, beautiful view on the Verdun town that some call the charming village and uh, there is also a few uh, kilometers away uh, the renaissance town of Bar-le-Duc with a guided tour. Thank you Christelle and Benoit. So I'm Christelle, I work for the Entourism Board so uh, in north of France. So the link we have uh, with uh, uh, America, with uh, the United States, is the uh, First World War. So uh, we're going to show you now uh, the maps. So we are located, as you see here, in the Hauts-de-France and Grand Est regions. So between Paris, France, 
Lille and Strasbourg. So it's a region very easy to reach either with the high speed train or with the also with the airport. The airport is here and it's only one hour drive from uh, uh, the vineyards of Champagne or uh, uh, to Lille and Calais, uh, one hour and a half and Strasbourg, it's about three hours with high speed train. So, um, as I said, we have a, a very strong connection with First World War. Here, that was the first, the, the line, the front line that was, uh, that took place uh, during uh, four years. So, as you see here, so we are close to the border, the Belgian border, Luxembourg one, and Germany border, and all the stars here are the main, uh, I will say, attractions, if we can say attractions, so that can be cemeteries, monuments, museum, about the First World War. So the, the American troops arrived in, um, in France in 1917. Uh, they were split in the French or English troops, and they, uh, start really to uh, fight against Germans in 1918. So, and you really helped us, uh, you really uh, saved us, I will say, uh, and pushed the Germans to the borders. So here you will see many, many uh, um, Mercies, like, as I say, museums, you, you can still see uh, disappeared villages with trenches, uh, lots of bullets. So, for example, we can collect still 50 tons of bullets each year and the soil will be clean after one, more, uh, one century. So, still, uh, you can still see lots of damages and bullets here. So, wonderful museum also. So that tell uh, the, the story and the history of war. Many undergrounds, um, the undergrounds were very important for the troops, either for the German troops, the British ones, Canadian, uh, also uh, the French, Americans. It was the place where they could rest and also hide and for sometimes fight also. As you see here, you have a, a, a new, uh, which was a new monument, uh, pretty new, I will say, uh, inaugurated a few years ago, the Ring of Remembrance in Notre Dame de Lorette. Uh, amazing place where you can see lots of missing people, all the people were killed in action here. So it's a big ring uh, to remember uh, all those people who were killed. Here you have uh, uh, very amazing monuments. Uh, this one on the left side is uh, the French and American friendship monument. It was uh, created after war and now inside this monument, the monument you have a wonderful museum uh, from the ABMC, the American Battlefield Monument Commission about the troops, the involvement of American troops uh, during First World War. Here also, so you will find many cemeteries. Uh, the biggest one is in Meuse-Argonne, uh, where you have more than um, 12,000 uh, war graves. Here you have the Enman Cemetery where the Marines uh, fought during July 1918. So as you see here, it's very uh, um, strong, very moving places uh, to discover. Here you have the Chateau de Blérancourt, very, very important for Americans and also for French. Uh, this is the story and the history of Anne Morgan, a wealthy uh, American woman who came here in 1917 and she decided to help French uh, population, French, uh, French people, and she created, uh, for example, uh, hospitals, uh, libraries, schools, and she spent with uh, 300 women uh, seven years here of her life to save us and to help us to rebuild the country. So here you have the video of the Chateau de Blérancourt. 
Uh, we won't watch it now, so it takes about eight minutes. So I suggest you watch it at home. Uh, and then if you have any questions, you can ask uh, Barton, obviously, or I, and I will be happy to answer all your questions. So as I told you, Anne Morgan was here to uh, rebuild the country. And obviously, so in the 20s, we started to rebuild the country in the Art Deco style. So you will see many facades in the article style, as you see here, like in Nancy, Saint-Quentin, Reims also, or other style like this one, more Flemish style in Arras, for example. So now I will let Benoit speak. Hello, so yes, I am uh, Benoit Dieval from the Pat Calais Tourist Board. And as you see on the map just afterwards, um, the Pat Calais is located really on the uh, top end of France, well, on the northernmost point in France. Um, this is the map, so stretching uh, on 120 kilometers on the coastline. And the major town is Arras. You've just seen a picture of this uh, beforehand. And to the right hand side of this map is Belgium. Uh, to the south is the Somme and Anne. And to the west uh, is the English Channel. And what you can see there at the top is the um, English coast, actually. It's really close. It just takes one hour and a half uh, by boat. And it takes just 50 minutes uh, on a train underneath the channel. And if you take the Euro tunnel, you can take your car on the train and that will take just 35 minutes to be on the other side. Really convenient. Uh, so that uh, is what you can see on the Opal Coast. So it's either cliffs or sand dunes. We have long stretches of beaches. Uh, it's really, really good for families and just for taking your time, being on your own. Uh, the, the beaches are not crowded. Well, they can be, but they're so big that you always have some space for yourself. And on the right hand side, what you can see is the English uh, coast. These are the white cliffs of Dover. And you can really see them like this in the morning, especially as the uh, sun is uh, sending its light from the east. It's just 20, 25 miles away. So the main attractions are on the left hand side, the Dragon de Calais. So Watch, look out for this on the on the internet. It's really impressive. It takes 50 people on its back, and it's just fir the first one of a series of machines that are arriving in Calais, and it's a it's a huge change in the town. It is it is really beautiful. Then you have Nausicaa. It's the largest aquarium in Europe. It's located in Boulogne-sur-Mer. Impressive as well, and they work on the sustainability of fishing and uh, the preservation of the corals. It's a, it's a really nice place. And on the right hand side, this is Le Touquet Paris Plage, where President Macron has a house. It's a really chic seaside resort with loads of restaurants and chic boutiques. Really lovely. Uh, we have countryside towns also. It's quite green in Pas de Calais. And uh, Montreuil sur Mer is one of them. Uh, it's a lovely walled, fortified town. Uh, with cobbled streets and restaurants and um, it's great for a day out. It's just a few kilometers away from, from the coast, actually. And this is Arras. This is the main town in Papier. So the Belfry can be visited. Actually, it's possible to arrange for your clients uh, an aperitif on top of the Belfry. So up there, you can see the square and the twin square, which is even bigger than this one. And uh, you can have uh, treat yourself with a glass of champagne and underneath the town and underneath the town hall, you can visit the uh, underground galleries that are um, form uh, um, chalk quarries dating back from the Middle Ages with loads of history. And uh, this square is pedestrian. And again, you have a good selection of cafes and uh, many uh, foodie shops. And what I wanted to present, you can see behind me, I would love to live there, but it's a bit too expensive for myself. This is the Louvre Lens. I guess uh, many people still don't know about it. You probably heard about the Louvre in Abu Dhabi. And the Louvre Lens will celebrate its, 20, uh, its 10th anniversary in 2022. And it's uh, really 
a branch of the Louvre in Paris, actually. The Louvre wanted to present its collection. You can maybe show the video afterwards. Wanted to present its collection in a chronological order, because in Paris, it's a series of, uh, it's like an encyclopedia. You have a series of specialist rooms and it's huge. And in the Louvre Lens, one of the three exhibition rooms is this one, the Gallery of Time. And it presents a selection of 250 works of art from the Louvre Lens, perfectly timed. And uh, so it starts from 3000 before Christ and it ends at the middle of the 19th century. So it starts with old sculptures and it ends up with, uh, with uh, paintings and it's really a good way to have an idea of the history of art because uh, you can see the evolution in styles, you can see the crossed influence, influences, sorry, it's a, it's a really lovely place and this is accessible from Paris within just one hour by train and 20 minutes walk or one hour by train and a free shuttle from the station to the Louvre and just in front is a fine uh, hotel restaurant in the garden of the Louvre which is nice, you have a lovely restaurant as well so it's uh, really, really not to be missed. And then you are in the end. So uh, it's the southern part, uh, I will say, of our destination. So between Long and Saint-Quentin, Chateau-Thierry and Reims, which is here, where you have all the big houses of Champagne and Paris is only here. Uh, you can see it on the map, but it's only one hour drive from Chateau Thierry, one and a half from Saint Quentin, and not far away, as you see here, from Pas de Calais, where Benoit worked and introduced his region. So I will show you this little video of 30 seconds that will give you an idea of what you can visit in the area. So as you see, we have many, many chateaux. So it's a very rich place uh, to stay, to live. It's very green, um, many chateaux, museum, fortified churches, this wonderful keep, uh, this is unique, for example, the fortified churches uh, in the Thierrache near the Belgian border is unique in France. And of course, we have champagne, uh, so you can have a tasting of champagne all day long if you want to uh, in our region. And you are in northern France, so that means you have also many cathedrals uh, to visit. For example, in my area, we have more than uh, five, uh, four of them, sorry, yeah, in the region. As I told you, so we have many monuments. So we are the, the fourth department, the fourth region in France for historical monuments with the uh, chateau, uh, this wonderful uh, uh, city hall in Saint-Quentin, uh, Flemish style, and all around the place, you have also Art Deco facade. These uh, picture here on the left side is the Enmarne Cemetery I talked about and the chapel and behind uh, this chapel you have the wood, Belo wood, uh, very important for the Marines in July 1918. And uh, in our cathedral you can also climb to the top of the tower and have a wonderful view uh, on the landscape on the countryside. And as I told you, we have uh, the Champagne route. So we produce the Meunier grapes uh, that gives uh, the fruitness of the champagne and you will have a, a very good time, a very funny time, a pleasant time in the champagne cellars. So here you only have one big house of champagne, which is Spanier. Uh, the only one, the, this is really the only big one. The others are in Epernay and Reims. And here you will find uh, mainly small wine producers. So they will uh, welcome you in their property, show you around the vineyard so you can organize, for example, a lunch or dinner in the cellars or, or even a picnic in the vineyards. You can take a vintage car and uh, drive in the vineyards of Champagne. And of course, many, many tastings of Champagne. 
and cheese, as you see here, as we have a, a very famous cheese in France, uh, which is called the Maroil. Uh, Maroil is very well known by French people. So I will let you try it and test it and say what you think about it. Uh, you have here the link of the video of Metier Seller. So have a look on it. It takes about one minute uh, to, to watch it. And then the Meuse with Christelle. So welcome here in the Meuse. Uh, here, well, um, we are at about one hour away from Paris by high speed train between Paris and Strasbourg. And uh, um, as you can see, uh, our um, areas are really different from the atmosphere, but all what they have all in common is that the hospitality of local people. As uh, Christelle said, you can visit uh, small producers and uh, you will um, hear that we have also in this area uh, some good surprises. Um, and it's like this confiture, this caviar de bar. It's a special jam that was created in the 14th century. So uh, history is also in, in the tradition of uh, this kind of sweets. Um, the heritage of the Renaissance time is um, pretty important in the Meuse area in Lorraine. Uh, and you visit here in Bar-le-Duc, uh, this district uh, in the upper town is uh, really great and there are masterpieces of uh, uh, Ligier Richier, an artist uh, of the 16th century. And uh, well, about that, in this theater, I wanted to show it. Oh, but it's a little, a, a, anyway, uh, it's because it was uh, occupied by uh, American troops during World War II, and now it's uh, being renovated and it's uh, like a jewel, uh, the Italian style theater. So now I show you a slide of Verdun. Verdun is the town of the Battle of Verdun during World War I. Uh, there are authentic sites of um, this battle of, um, you, you really grasp uh, the, what the people endured, what the soldier endured in this war, what was the great war when you visit there. Because uh, as Christa said in the introduction, uh, there are sites where you can understand in museum, for example, the Memorial de Verdun, you can feel history when you go there and walk on the battlefield, you, you really feel the imprint of history. Our destinations, they are like books in which you, the visitors read and feel history. So uh, here we have uh, uh, also in Verdun, this town is uh, a town with 30 centuries of history. So there is really a, a good moment to spend here and, and uh, understand uh, what made uh, the trend of events that led to Europe today also, that makes really people think and, and well, it's, uh, it's really interesting and, and moving experience to go in this uh, counties. Uh, also here we have got Dragé, this uh, sugar almonds, and you understand when you visit the factory why it is so linked to the traditional French culture and why you find there in weddings, for example. But I won't tell too much because you have to, to look for it and, and ask Barton a little more about the, the area. And here you see this four star hotel where you can win a night maybe. So now we can see this uh, short trailer from Dali Newman. She came here and visits places in N and Meuse. Uh, so you see uh, what I meant by authentic sites. This is at the Budvoqua in Argonne, Meuse Argonne. Uh, the place uh, where American troops uh, came and fought with the first army. And it's, uh, like I said, very moving because here you are in the largest cemetery in Europe for American uh, with 14,000 crosses. And uh, this is Meuse Argonne. Here we come again at Verdun, a very charming town. And well, I invite you also to listen to this video and uh, understand uh, the, this uh, uh, authentic histories that we, we speak about and uh, the personal stories of soldiers and, and families that lived here. Here is the Chateau des Monts-Hérault, 
where American soldiers came also during the First World War this time. And now it is a four-star hotel that is really great and where you have just a, such a plate of cheese that it's marvelous and makes people dream about. So next slide. Just to give you an overview of the area. Here you can see we, are, we have um, somebody uh, going biking along the Meuse River. This is a new Eurovelo uh, 19. And this is a trail that is about 100 miles and you can go uh, biking there all along. Uh, the area is really enjoyable for uh, the whole family. Uh, you can come here, uh, even on the sites of history, you can go there with children or uh, younger people and uh, share uh, time and a nice uh, discovery, like going also on contemporary art. Uh, like for example, here you see in the woods, this is the Vent des Forêts uh, lanes, where you can walk uh, by and see about hundreds works of art uh, that are really uh, great. And uh, well, it's just to give you this overview that I showed you this slide. Not far away at about one hour from uh, our area is uh, Metz and also Nancy, uh, the biggest town in Lorraine. Uh, what we have in common also in our areas all along this uh, former Western Front and in Northeast France is that the towns are in a human uh, scale. Uh, the biggest town is maybe eight, um, no, it's one, 180,000 inhabitants. It's just good to give you an idea. In, in my area, the biggest town is uh, counting 18,000 inhabitants. Uh, so here in Metz, you've got the Centre Pompidou. Uh, it's uh, an extension of the Centre Pompidou Paris. Uh, Metz is also well known for the special stone that is a kind of yellow stone that's really beautiful and the German district uh, that's uh, really um, majestuous and uh, also the cathedral with uh, Chagall stained glasses and Nancy is well known as the, as the town of the birth of Art Nouveau and you find also there the beautiful Place Stanislas that is inscribed on UNESCO uh, heritage sites list. So now we see a few hotels. Benoit. Yes, this is again in, um, in Pas-de-Calais. Uh, there are many hotels in the region, of course. Again, we are between London, Brussels and Paris. So even if we have small towns in the region, it's a place really easily accessible from the big towns around. So we have a good offer of good restaurants and hotels. This one is located not far from the Louvre Roland's, uh, what, 30 minutes drive, something like that. Uh, and it's a really good place actually. The chef was born in Lens, he's now in his 60s and he grew from nothing and did manage to get two Michelin stars to this place and uh, he's a lovely guy and you can do um you can attend uh cookery classes with him he does not speak english but he's there and uh, one of his sous chef is speaking english and it's a really wonderful experience because he talks about cooking of course but also he loves the region and uh he's unpretentious even though he is uh i mean he's playing with the stars so that's a really nice place if you like cats there are some cats around there uh, in the decorations, but also there are two from the house, so lovely rooms and, of course, excellent dining experience. The Chateau de Beaulieu, yeah, it's really good. It's a place I like, this one. Then you have the Chateau de Fer. It's a five-star hotel close to Reims, the Champagne Cellars, and also one hour and 15 minutes drive from the airport Paris Charles de Gaulle. Uh, it is a wonderful Renaissance chateau, as you see here, with about 30 rooms, very uh, French cuisine, gourmet cuisine. Uh, it's a very nice place for wedding, for example. You can wander in the old medieval sea, um, chateau here and have a good time also at the spa. Then I would suggest you to go also to this hotel. It's a modern one. Uh, 
has been completely refurbished this year. Uh, so in 2020, uh, all the rooms are pretty large and have all the view on the Lake of Elet. And just behind uh, the, um, the hotel, you will have a wonderful golf course. So if you want to practice golf, uh, it's a good place to, to go. And it's near the Champagne Cellars and also uh, near the battlefields uh, and especially the American battlefields. Then you have the Chateau de Courcel. It's also a place where you can have a cooking lesson uh, if you want to uh, try uh, some foie gras or uh, duck or, or uh, try to do a, a champagne sauce. It's a good place to go. It's a Renaissance Chateau. I love this place. It's very cozy. Uh, all the rooms are very uh, well refurbished, as you can see here, and they have a wonderful French gardens. And then, so the I spoke list. already about this uh, great accommodation there. They are really nice and very different uh, from the atmosphere. You have either the Chateau des Moirons for Star Hotel with this very good table there. And after the meal, why not going into the park along the Meuse River? It's really pleasant. There are beautiful trees and, and there is really a special atmosphere. It's a family run hotel. And in Verdun, you've got this hotel uh, that was the former uh, officer, uh, officer's building that is completely uh, renovated and uh, very pleasant, also on the border of Meuse. And I wanted to speak also about these projects because they are really interesting. Uh, this hotel designed by Philippe Stark that is called Maison Heller. H-E-L-E-R, and it is announced for uh, this year. Well, maybe it's going to be a little late because of uh, the context, but, but um, it should be really amazing. It's uh, like this big building that is um, like uh, remembering like um, the, the, this, uh, um, uh, you know, this monolith in, uh, in 2001, um, Space Odyssey from Stanley Kubrick, it's like really special where there will be rooms there and the restaurant will be on the top in this uh, house that is typical from the German, well, the former German district of Metz. So that would be uh, really surprising. It was, uh, it's a, sim a symbol for the Lorraine region, like uh, the roots and turn to future. So there are also great places in Nancy, uh, like this uh, hotel that will be four star, a uh, family run hotel. And yes, in Metz there is a Citadel four star hotel, just one hour away from Verdun battlefield. And it is really pleasant also to, to drive all along these small routes and there are not so many cars and, and you can park easily and uh, no problem to visit places because you have no queue. And, and that's the point when you go in this, kind of secret part of France um, all, all along this uh, uh, northeast, uh, northeast part of France. Perfect. So I'm going to talk about a few sample itineraries or an example itinerary here. And I think you'll all agree that really that you could spend a week in any of these regions. There is so much to see and do. And as you said, there is a real hidden gem in such a busy part of Europe, it's so nice to get some fresh air and see these amazing sites. Uh, probably for everything Eurobound does is customized from the ground up. So we take what your clients want in terms of, even if they don't have specific desires and needs, and we build an itinerary around their, what they'd like to do whilst they're traveling or any must-see sites. Um, this region works very well, of course, as an add-on to Paris, where most people will be flying into internationally. And a great way to see that is with a rental car. Uh, the roads are very quiet. You're not driving on these big freeways like you might get in America. And so if you go on to the next slide, I can then show you um, some of the inclusions. Um, so a four day rental car would be enough to start seeing the region and get a really good flavor for it. And we've got three nights in a beautiful 18th century wine house, um, a champagne tour, um, just to get a flavor of that. Um, which is really wonderful. Uh, but we can, of course, customize this. You know, if your clients aren't 
really into champagne drinking, then perhaps they would like a more historical cultural side or food tastings, etc. And of course, we can work on all of that. Um, on the next slide, you will see a little bit more of a breakdown in terms of um, the packages. This is, as you might see on the Eurobound broadcast emails that we send out, highlighting the region. So we've got the Chateau de Rilly in the traditional room. All of our rooms always come with breakfast. And because we work with these hotels so often, um, they really look after the Eurobound clients um, with often times um, upgrades on arrival if there's availability, late checkouts and so forth. And then the, the final slide on this one is a little day by day here, how it might work. So you pick up your rental car and head uh, towards Rems. Uh, it's about two hours drive out there, check in and have a nice afternoon private tour um, of, the, of the area. The full day private tour of Verdun, and we you saw there how many different things you can do in that region. And of course, with Rems in Epinay the following day and before heading out back down to the airport. And so that would just be a little way, especially if clients have already been to Paris before. I would always be recommending, you know, land, maybe spend a couple of days uh, to get your bearings and then head out on out into that wonderful French countryside. So I think if you pop to the next slide and the quiz questions. So uh, you know, a chance to win some of those amazing prizes at the start. Um, these are the three quiz questions. Where is the Louvre's Museum located? What kind of vineyards do you find in the end? And what is the name of the largest US cemetery in Europe? All of those were discussed in our presentation. Um, please send your answers to me before April 8th, 2021. And to bartonatyourabound.com, I'm gonna do three random draws and three lucky winners will have that um, to, to uh, enjoy in the future for them or for their clients. Uh, we can obviously work with the local tourist boards to organize that once um, it is safe to do so and to travel. If you have any questions about traveling in Europe or traveling in France in particular, uh, please do send me an email. I can give you all the latest updates on the COVID restrictions, um, where talk to you about what's required, wh where it's safe to travel and so forth. Um, but I think that just leads me to say thank you to all of my colleagues in France. Um, I think that was a really nice presentation. Thank you for taking the time uh, just before Easter to do that. And um, thank, thank you. for you, Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for inviting us to present our areas. Thank you. You're welcome. Perfect, Jeff. You can finish the recording. Thank you.